Hello everyone and welcome to another tutorial with the Rowan 3D Printing Club. My name is Sean and I'm going to be showing you how to make a bearing today. So if you don't know what a bearing is, it is a mechanical device that uh, allows for more freedom of movement uh, for spinning. And what's really cool about the bearing that we're going to be designing today is that it is a single part print in place bearing. So if you can see there's balls on the inside of uh, the two rings. And those balls are actually separated from uh, the rest of the part. And when you print it, there's support. You break the support away and everything becomes free. It can spin around. Pretty cool. All right. And once we get done today, this should be what it looks like. Um, keep in mind that this is a mechanical part and that there are certain tolerances and sizes that you have to follow along. I played with this a little bit so that I know this works. So just be really careful and follow my steps exactly. All right, so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is open up Onshape. Uh, it's a free program. If you have a student uh, email address, you sign up real quick, real easy. And our first step is gonna go over to the Create button in the top left-hand corner and create a new document. I'm gonna name this document Bearing. So that brings us to our workspace. Now, the first step in making our bearing is to make the inner and outer rings. And so to do that, we're gonna make a new sketch. So the top left-hand corner, and we're gonna do it on the front plane. All right. And then just so we can see what we're doing, click on the front face of the cube in the top right-hand corner. Perfect. All right. So to begin, we're going to want to make a rectangle that's 0.375 inches by 0.875 inches. So we're going to start with a rectangle. And then you're going to use your dimension tool. That looks pretty good. Now at the center of this rectangle, I'm gonna make a circle. And this is gonna be a guide for us to place uh, the, the balls in the ball bearing later. All right, so you just wanna find your midpoints. It's right here. And we're gonna make that circle 0.3 inches in diameter. And then we are going to cut away and separate this rectangle into two halves. So we're going to use another rectangle tool. This time we're going to use the center point rectangle. We're going to go from the center of this uh, circle out to the edges of the previous rectangle. And we're going to make this 0 0.075 inches wide. Perfect. Now we need to go ahead and separate these two halves. So you're gonna to go to your toolbar, toolbar and use the trim tool. Looks like a pair of scissors. And we're gonna trim away all of these extraneous lines. All right, and then when you're done, you should look like you have almost like two squares with a chunk missing out of the middle. And that's gonna be our fir first sketch, all right? So when we're done, we just hit the green check. And now we're gonna use the revolve tool. So this is actually the cutout 
the uh, cross-sectional area of this part. So you see it looks like a circle. We don't have a circle yet. We're going to revolve this around the central axis and make a circle. So go to use the revolve tool, and we're going to select both of these faces, one and two. And then you'll see in a red box, it says revolve axis. And when we click this, it allows us to pick how we want this to, to be extruded. So I'm going to pick my revolve axis to be right on the center line of the origin. And make sure selected is full. There's different types. You can uh, adjust how far you want it to revolve. We want a full ring. So we're going to do full. And we're going to hit the green check. And when we zoom out, right click a little bit, you'll actually see these two parts. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is uh, make the first of the balls in this ball bearing. All right. So we're going to make a new sketch. And we're going to again go on this front plane. Okay. Zoom in a little bit so we can see what we're doing. <clears throat> so I'm going to take a construction line from the origin to the top of our previous part. To make this a little bit easier, I'm going to make our original sketch visible. So if you see, we can see the outline of our circle from this last part. So what I'm going to do is make another circle at the origin of our previous circle. So that way we know that it's uh, in the same spot. And this circle is going to be 0.278 inches. So take your dimension tool. 1.278. And when you zoom in a little bit, you'll see it's not quite as big as the last circle we made, and that's to allow space for this to move. Now we're going to use the revolve tool again, but we can't revolve a full circle. So what we're going to do is cut this circle in half. And just like we did before, we're going to use the trim tool and get rid of half of our circle. Doesn't matter which side, just pick one. And that's the last step for our second sketch. So we're going to go up to our sketch box and hit the green check. Now it's kind of hard to see right now, but there is a half circle inside here. So in order to get a better view of what's going on, I'm actually going to right click on revolve. And I'm going to scroll down to suppress. And what that's going to do is it's going to remove the parts that I don't want to see right now to let me see inside of the previous part. So now we can see just the sketches that we made before. We're going to go over to the revolve in the top left hand corner. We're going to click on that half, sphere, half circle. And for our revolve axis, just make sure it's the straight edge of that circle. That looks about right, so I'm going to hit the green check. And you'll see we have, we have a full sphere right here. But in order for a ball bearing to work, we want as many spheres as possible. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to use a circular pattern tool. So that's in the top toolbar. So you're going to scroll all the way over. Uh, it probably looks like four cubes right now, if you click that drop down box, we'll see a circular pattern tool. So we're going to click that. Now our first step is entities to pattern. So that means what do you want to pattern? We're going to click on the sphere. Uh, just like with the revolve tool, we have to choose an axis for this to go around since, in a, it's, since it's in a circular pattern. So our axis of pattern is going to be 
uh, that middle line from your first sketch. Awesome. Now let's get a top view. So click on top on your uh, home cube. Now we can fit four. I know we can fit four. What's five look like? Better. And basically you just wanna keep going until you have as many of these spheres as possible in a circle, but so that none of them are touching. So I believe for this one, we can only have nine. We can have up to nine. You'll see they're getting pretty close. But just to show, let's see what happens when we put 10 in. Yeah. See how the, these intersect right here? We don't want that. So we're going to keep it at nine spheres. We're going to hit the green check. So when you zoom out, you should see a little ring of these spheres. Now to go back to the original part, we're going to go back to our revolve, right click, and then unsuppress it. I'm also going to remove the, uh, I'm going to hide our first sketch since we don't need that anymore. Now at this point, the bearing is done. It's fully functional. Uh, if you were to print this right now, uh, it would spin very freely like this. But usually for bearings, you want to attach it to something or you, know, you want little tabs to make it easier to touch and play with. So for me, I'm going to add these little tabs. So we're going to go to new sketch. And for our sketch plane, I'm going to use the top of this part. Now to get my references for how I want the tabs to look, I'm gonna use a construction square. So I'm gonna use the center of point rectangle and I'm gonna click the construction tool up here. So that makes it a dotted line. And it uh, won't get in the way when I try to extrude this later. So I'm gonna go over to our origin right here in the center. Make a big square. And I'm gonna make this the same diameter as our circle. So it should be 0 0.875 times two. So you can actually plug in that equation, 0 0.875 times two. Looks good. And we'll do that for the other sides as well. Perfect. All right. Now, I don't want any sharp edges on this, so I'm going to continue to use circles. So I'm going to use the circle tool. And on opposing corners of this construction square, I'm just going to draw two circles. Bad. I'm actually going to use a center point circle. Or I'm going to use a construction line and I'm going to connect these two corners first. Because of where I want my circle to be, I want the origin to be at the intersection of this outer edge and this construction circle. And then I'm going to take that circle out to that corner edge. And that'll make it a nice size and not interfere with any other parts. Okay, that looks pretty good. Uh, now I'm going to take another circle from the origin and just outline uh, the outer edge of our bearing. So to make a circle from the origin, and just connect it to this outer edge. And just like before, we want to trim away any extra lines that we don't need for our final extrusion. So we're going to use the trim tool. And we're going to get rid of the inner arcs of the circles right here. So we're going to do that for both sides. We're also going to get rid of these outer edges.
And what that should leave you with are these little Mickey Mouse ear type shapes. And this should be good for uh, this sketch. So we're going to click the green check uh, next to sketch three. OK, and if you want to get a better view, you can zoom out a little bit. And we're going to extrude this. So I'm going to pick both of these faces. And right now it has it going the opposite direction of where I want it to go. I want it to extrude down. So I'm going to click uh, where it next where it says blind. There's a little arrow. So I'm going to click that arrow and it should flip it around. Now I don't remember exactly how tall this bearing was, but I do know that I wanted to go to the bottom of this part. So I can actually click uh, where it says blind. There's a drop down box. I'm going to use up to face. And if you get an underside look of your bearing, you can actually click that face and it should extrude so it's flush. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to hit the green check. Awesome. Now I have one final step for me. This is optional for you guys. But since this is a bearing and I know I'm probably going to use it for something, I wanted to put some holes in it so that I could attach it to a part and actually use it. So I'm going to put some holes in that fit some machine screws that I have. So we're going to make another sketch on the top face of this bearing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some circles. So I'll make a circle at the origin. And I'll make a circle that's co-centric with the Mickey Mouse ear shapes. And the size that I'm using for this is 0.14. So that's the diameter of the screws that I have. Okay, easy enough, and that should be it. So I'm gonna hit the green check. And this for, for this last step, I don't wanna extrude anything. I don't wanna revolve anything. I actually wanna cut these circles out of the part. So this, you'll see extrude, you scroll all the way down. If you actually click extrude, um, instead of new, we're gonna scroll over, you see add, and you also see remove. So I'm gonna click on these circles under the Remove tab. And it says that it's going one inch. I don't really care how far it goes as long as it goes all the way through. And if you look at the preview, it does. So I'm gonna hit the green check. And that's it. So I hope you guys had fun and that you can use this bearing for lots of cool things or as just a fun toy.